In this video, I'm going to show you how to place the starter on this Nissan Pathfinder. Let's get started. I need to remove this air intake box here, and it has two 10 millimeter bolts, one on each side, one on the right. I have a setup here that someone has made with a mounting nut underneath. Typically there would be a clip here, so either way, it should still be a 10 millimeter bolt, 10 millimeter on the other side. Same setup over here. Once again, you will not have a removable nut or should not have one underneath. Now pull this up and out. Now with that air intake off, we're gonna have to remove the battery as well as the battery tray. To do that, I'm gonna start by disconnecting this bracket here that holds the battery hold down on, onto the uh, computer here. It's a 10 millimeter bolt over here. Actually, all of these fasteners are gonna be 10 millimeter. This, you'll have to completely unbolt this. You don't necessarily have to unbolt. That bracket can stay attached. And now I'm gonna take out these two 10 millimeter nuts. Okay, that J-hook fell on the ground, that's fine. This one will stay in the vehicle. This one should have also stayed, but uh, it looks like it fell. Now you can remove this piece, set it aside. Now we have to disconnect the two battery terminals. I'm gonna start with the negative. This is a 10 millimeter uh, nut that holds the negative nice and tight on here. Loosen that up, pull the negative terminal right up and off. Set it aside so it cannot make connection until we've removed the positive. 10 millimeter nut also on the positive. Loosen this up. Looks like we have an extra wire here, so I'm gonna have to remove that. If you don't have this wire, you don't have to take that mounting nut all the way off. Unfortunately, I do. Now you can remove the whole terminal, set that aside, and now the battery should be ready to come right up and off. Be careful, it's heavy. I'm gonna take this insulation out of here. It's very dusty, be careful. Now take the plastic tray out. Let's unplug all of these connections for the uh, main engine's computer. Press on that little tab, flip this up. As you flip this up, it should push the connector away. There we go. Now be very careful and gentle with these. Okay, set them aside. And there are four in total. Okay, now there's a 10 millimeter mounting nut at the top here. You don't have to completely remove it. You do have to completely remove this one on the bottom though. Okay, take that one out. This one at the top is slotted, so you can pull this computer down and out, set it aside safely. Let's take this bolt out also. Disconnect that bracket. Okay, that's off. Let's unbolt these two 13 millimeter bolts. There's also a smaller computer right on the back side here. It's the same style. Push up on this. Uh, lever or pull up on this lever until it clicks and that will unlock the whole connector for you there we go okay so let's follow this bracket along this one's a little trickier to see there's a bolt right here let's take this one out as well it's a 13 millimeter if you push this uh, positive terminal aside there's gonna be one last 13 millimeter bolt down there let's take this one out as well Okay, I will show you exactly how to do this once it's off, but I can barely see it right now. You have to stick a pocket screwdriver back here and unclip this harness off of a retainer. Okay, once this is off, and once again, I will show you in a second exactly how to do this. You should be able to unlodge this entire bracket. So this is what that looks like. It has a little cutout right there. And on the harness, you have this this clip right here that has a tab in the middle so basically you have to go from behind it push that tab through so that instead of it locking into the cutout it pushes through and then you can release the whole bracket now let's take out these three 13 millimeter mounting bolts that are left so we can take out the battery tray we have a clip
clip to undo over there. Grab a trim tool and pop it out. There we go. Take this tray out. Now let's continue with the tray removal here, this bracket for the tray. We need to get this wiring harness off of the tray and it's held on with two 10 millimeter bolts right down here. It's pretty difficult to see. I'm gonna stick my ratchet down here with a 10 millimeter socket. Try to get these off of here. Well, I was able to get one. Let's see if I can get the second one. There's the second one. Now we can move this bracket for the uh, wiring harness and then there are gonna be two 13 millimeter bolts, one over here, one over here that we have to take out. All right. Okay, there's the bolt. And finally, we can remove this bracket. Now we can finally have access to the starter there is a main power wire here and the signal wire or trigger wire, whatever you want to call it, right over here, which is just a little clip. Let's unplug that, set that aside. If you want to, you can pop the harness off of here. Not really necessary, so I'm just going to skip past that. And we can unbolt this wire off of here. It's got a mounting nut on it. This is going to be a 12 millimeter mounting nut. Put a ratchet and a socket on this or a wrench. Break it free. It should not be too tight. Take it off all the way, pull the wire straight back and off and to the side, and that's it. At this point, we can just undo the two large bolts that hold the starter onto the bell housing of the transmission. One, you can see right there in that little gap. The other one is going to be underneath, so a lot more difficult to get to. But with an extension, you should be able to get to it through right here. This is going to be a 14 millimeter bolt. That's one. I'm going to go ahead and remove this bolt. The lower one should be right underneath this solenoid here. So feel for it. Your ratchet should, or your uh, socket should end up pretty much on the bolt. Oh, there it is right there. All right. Now you can pull the starter out. I know that bolt is still in the starter, but it's not bolted on. So there is the starter right there. And you can take this bolt out now, set it aside so we can reuse it. I did notice this uh, shim here. You have to save that and reuse that as well. You want to inspect the mounting area to make sure it is not in too bad of condition. Mine looks okay. I'm just going to wipe it off with a rag so I can get sand and debris out of there. Other than that, it's not very corroded, which is good because the starter grounds out through contacting the engine. So you want to make sure that if it's very corroded, you sand it down. Mine was not. Um, a lot of times, if you live in very rusty climates, the starters will actually seize onto the bell housing here, and then you'll have to tap them off with a rubber mallet. Thankfully, I did not have to do that. You'll have to put this shim on with the two tabs facing the starter. It can pretty much only go on one way once you do that, because it has to line up with the bolt holes. And I'm going to take the lower bolt, so the starter is going to sit like this. I'm going to take the lower bolt, put it through here, because that's exactly how I took it out. Just as a quick tip, if this bracket or shim doesn't stay for you and it keeps wanting to fall off, bend these tabs down a little. And then once you put it on, it should clip right on just like that. And now it'll stay. Let's bring the new starter down. Same exact way the old one came out. Make sure you don't lose that lower bolt. Now, if it is easier for you to start the top bolt in first, go ahead but I would recommend at least leaving the lower bolt in the hole in the starter. Otherwise, it'll be quite a bit more difficult to uh, start it or to find the hole at least. All right, so mine started. That's perfect. I'm not going to bottom it out or uh, tighten it, but now that it's started, there we go. I'm going to bring it just a little bit closer by hand, and uh, it looks like it's threading in very smoothly, so that's good. Definitely don't want to cross-thread these or start them with a power tool or anything like that. If your bolt won't stay on, take a piece of paper towel, stick it right in between the socket and the bolt. That'll basically jam it in there just enough so you can use your uh, socket and extension as a guide. I'm gonna start this on. There we go, that started on nice and smoothly. I'm gonna take my socket off so I can get that piece of paper towel out of there. And then we can snug them both up and torque them. 
Okay, I'm gonna leave that extension down there so I can torque it. The torque for these is gonna be 41 foot-pounds, both top and bottom bolts. All right, that's one. And two. Now let's reconnect the wiring. The new starter comes with a new mounting nut and a lock washer. Take that lock washer off. You're gonna to wanna to put it on after this wire. This wire has a little bit of corrosion on it, so I'm actually gonna take a wire brush to it and clean it up. If you don't get a good connection here, your uh, starter may not engage. So it's very important that you have a clean connection. Doesn't have to look perfect, but it does have to not have any corrosion or rust buildup on it. That looks pretty good. Take that wire, slide it over, bottom it out. Let's get that mounting nut and the washer on. Lock washer, mounting nut, thread it on all the way. This new nut is a 13 millimeter socket. The torque for this is 76 inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds. This is a soft brass stud. So if you don't have a torque wrench that goes that low, all you can do is just take a small ratchet or wrench, give it a quick snug, an eighth of a turn after it bottoms out, and that's it. The lock washer will hold this in place. If you wanted to put any dielectric grease or silicone paste over it, you would put it over it, not in the middle between the, uh, the connectors, but this should be pretty well covered with this rubber boot, so make sure that goes back on. Let's connect this wire back in, make sure it clicks. All right, now we can put everything else back together. All right, let's get the bracket that supports the battery tray back on. I'm gonna start this front bolt in first because it's a little bit easier to reach. That way the bracket isn't trying to fall off while I put the rear bolt in. If you wanna clean up the threads on these bolts, that's a good idea. Since they're hard to reach, it might be uh, easier to thread them in. All right, there we go. Let's tighten these up. Make sure they're nice and snug. Now we have to put these two little 10 millimeters back that are uh, basically impossible to see from this angle. You can see them on the other side, but it does not matter which one you start with. But whatever you do, don't tighten up the first one before you get the second one started. All right, so I got that first one started. You kind of have to feel for where they're trying to thread in. There we go. I got them both started, so let's snug them up. If you have a swivel socket, this will make things a whole lot easier. These are 10 millimeter in size. Now let's get this battery tray back in here. Make sure you're not pinching any wires in the process. like that. This ground wire was clipped on here just to secure it. One bolt over here, one over here, and one in the forward corner. Do not put any other ones in yet, especially this one, because the other ones hold on the uh, main bracket. Snug all these up. Let's get this bracket back in here. Remember to clip it in on the wire. Over there, this rubber grommet also was uh, here for the air box. You have to put the pin from the air box right in it, just like that. Okay, all the bolt holes should line up at this point. Make sure all of your wires are in the correct position, that they're not pinched, tangled, or not where they're supposed to be. I'm gonna clip this wire in. All you have to do is hook it over and press it on, just like that. Now we can put these bolts back in. There are four of them. All right, let's snug them all up. Does not matter where you start. Let's get the computer re, uh, reinstalled here. Actually, this one does not have to come off all the way. This mounting nut does. Take that off, slide the computer on down here, hook it onto the top first, and then over this bottom stud, put that mounting nut back. We'll tighten them both up. I'm gonna tighten up this top one first just so we can stop moving around. It's easier to get to here. Just make it snug, don't crush it down. And then the bottom one. 
Okay, nice and snug. Now we have to plug in all the electrical connectors. I'm gonna plug in the single one first on the smaller computer on the back side. Get that one situated. And it won't obviously plug in all the way by itself. You have to uh, flip this tab over. That's what's gonna lock it in. These here, not only are they color coded, but they also only reach and fit in one connector. So you can't really accidentally put them backwards, as you can see. I'm gonna start with the lowest one. Get that slid in here. And then flip this over. That's gonna pull it in and lock it. You definitely wanna make sure these are all properly connected. Otherwise, uh, there will be some serious electrical issues when you go to run the vehicle. There we go. And the last one at the top. Okay, so all four are connected. This is bolted in. Now I'm gonna put back the plastic battery tray which has three little pins on the bottom. Those have to line up. And on the front side, you can see there's an arrow. The arrow is pointing towards the engine. So that's how you know how to line that up. Now, if you still have this insulation, go ahead and put it back. Now take the battery and drop it down here. Make sure this insulation stays out of the way and you're not crushing it with the battery. Pull the terminals away just so they don't interfere. This positive terminal wants to stay on here, so that's fine. My cap fell off. I'm going to put that back on. This vehicle had some uh, extra fog light wiring here that I'm going to put back on. Make sure the terminal is bottomed out on the post of the battery. You want it to make a good connection. And take your 10 millimeter tool of choice and snug this up. To tighten it properly, you just want to go until you can't spin this terminal anymore by hand. Otherwise, if you go way further past that, you could possibly stretch this and then it won't make a good connection in the future. Uh, you'll damage it. So that's done and same applies to the negative. When you plug in the negative, it may have a small spark. Put this back on, tighten this up. Same applies here. Just tighten it until you can't spin it by hand anymore. That's perfect right there. Now let's put the battery hole down in, hook this back on. It has a, a little tab that it hooks onto on the battery tray. There it is. I just got it situated. And then put this over. If you have a wire like this, make sure you don't pinch it down under. Make sure it goes over the battery hole down. I'm holding this uh, hook, this rod, with one finger so it doesn't fall down. I'm going to start a mounting nut on it. That way it can stay on here. There we go. Now you can let go and you can start the other one. This is the tricky one because it wants to fall down all the time. Okay, let's do the same to this one over here. Got a 10 millimeter socket, tighten these both up. You don't have to make them very tight, you just have to snug them up. Basically what you're looking for from this is to just hold down the battery, not to crush it. There we go. Get this bolt back in here, snug it up. If you haven't already, put this bolt back in that secures this plastic bracket for the wiring harness onto the bracket that holds the computer and snug it up. Make sure you don't make it too tight. If you used a piece of rag, make sure you remove that. Now take this piece of the air intake, line it back up with the air box. Make sure that goes over. It should fall right into place. And these bolts should line up, or the bolt holes, I should say. Stick your 10 millimeter headed bolt right through. Of course, for me, I have to uh, hold the mounting nut on the bottom side. Hopefully you don't have to do that. I'm gonna hold it with a wrench, snug this up. Don't make it too tight, you don't wanna break it. And let's do the same to this side, snug it up. And there you go. Now start the engine, and of course, if it starts, you're good to go. If it doesn't, check all of your connections. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.